I know uh, this year is the first year we lost our chairman and one of the founders of our company, Brad Cook. He was a big supporter of the Denver to Gold Group and, and ultimately loved to always come to this conference and always enjoyed speaking. So it, it, it was very, uh, I, I guess, ultimately heartwarming the amount of uh, notes our company got from across the industry and, and, and ultimately across the globe about his passing and really were supported by by the industry and, and then want to thank everybody for that. Uh, so with it uh, now, and as it said, I've been the CEO now for almost a year and a half and been focused really on the growth and long-term future of Endeavor Silver. And obviously, we have our cautionary notes, so I, I will be making statements about the future, so uh, plan accordingly. Uh, for 2022, we are focused uh, on continuing to do what we've been doing at Guana City. We're going to produce close to 7.8 million silver equivalent ounces, uh, which will be very similar to what we did last year. We've been operating now at Guana City and Bolanitos for 16 and 15 years, respectively. They are what I would say mature assets. Our all-in sustaining cost was guided to be 20 to 21 dollars uh, for the year of 2022. Ultimately, we will see that come down in the back half of the year with lower prices. A big portion of our Guanas to be cost is a royalty cost, uh, a royalty expense that we pay to Frisco uh, for a portion of 60% of the uh, production that we have from Guanas to be. Cash costs will be about nine to ten dollars this year, and generally we've been right in line with that for the first half of the year. With Q3 expected to come out uh, late October. Our sustained capital expenditures for the year is $34 million. Our development budget through October is $41 million, and that's on Terranera, uh, effectively a project that's going to double our production and cut our cost profile in half. Really, the future of Endeavor is the Terranera project. It's located an hour and a half from Puerto Vallarta in the state of Jalisco, and we've been advancing this now for the last kind of four to five years. And of course, we were uh, founded and built through uh, the drill bit. Uh, founded by geologists, exploration geologists, so we continue with our exploration budget of 13 million across three jurisdictions, Mexico, the United States, and Chile. Our sustainability strategy, people, planet, and business, it's very important to us. It's how we've built our company. Uh, when we arrived in Guana City in 2004, the town is ultimately right beside the mine. In Bolonitos, the town of La Luz is right beside the mine. It's always been... Uh, a fabric of our company to be able to intertwine those communities with our mine and be able to kind of operate as neighbors. So it's nothing new to us. The ESG stuff has just become more relevant from a corporate governance standpoint and reporting standpoint. And then this year we put out our strategy over the next three years of what we're trying to attain. And ultimately it's about the people planning in our business. Um, and it again, becomes fabric of what we do. Our recent highlights, uh, we continue to improve our, our, safety performance, which is paramount for our company. It's underground vein mining. Guana SV just surpassed two and a half million hours of no uh, long-term incidents. Our year-to-day production, we improved our guidance. We increased our guidance uh, last quarter, revised it upwards for the second year in a row. Through Q2, we did 1.4 million ounces of silver and almost 9,300 ounces of gold for 2.1 million silver equivalent ounces. And as I say, we're about 4.1 million through the first half of the year. We have been pushing at Terranera. We do not have a formal construction decision yet, uh, but we have been working through detailed engineering, procurement, and site clearing. We've approved a budget through October 31st for $41 million. As we complete financial due diligence, we've been through technical uh, due diligence. We've been through ESG due diligence. It's just trying to get this completed here in the fourth quarter. Um, and ultimately, we completed the acquisition of the Pitaria project that we announced in January. We purchased that at Pitaria from SSR Mining for $70 million in a royalty, which ultimately enhances our profile and really pairs well with Terranera after we're completed the, the, what one day will be a construction of Terranera. And of course, from a drill result standpoint, we have another project in Mexico called Peral. Continue to grow that project, continue to put out good resort, results from our drill program, and continue to put out great results from Guanas V's drill program. The Guanas V uh, mine, where we've been here 17 years, uh, is really being carried now from an area called El Curso. Uh, this is a, a concession that's owned by Frisco. We do pay a significant royalty there, uh, but ultimately, probably extend it mine life four to five years with just this discovery. 
We are continuing to drill near an old mine of ours called Porvenir Dos. We just started drilling there recently. Again, expecting good results from that area. Ultimately, the El Curso mine or the El Curso area is thicker and richer than what we've seen historically at Guanasvi and is effectively why we've been able to increase our guidance over the last two years from a production standpoint, that we're just getting better grades than our reserves over be big, bigger and better widths. But what we're really about, and, and the long-term plan for Endeavor is the Terranera project. Uh, it will be our next operating mine. Uh, we acquired this in 2010 from Grupo de Mexico uh, for, I, I believe, ultimately about $3 million. It was a discovery that we made. Uh, we've invested over $30 million on this project to date from an exploration standpoint with six technical reports and over 100,000 meters of drilling. We defined two main ore bodies, the Terranera vein, <clears throat> which is ex ex approximately 70% of the 75 million ounces of resource we've defined, or sorry, close, yeah, close to 95 million ounces of resources that we've defined, and the Laluz vein, which is a high-grade gold vein adjacent to Terranera. We've defined a 12-year mine life uh, with our feasibility, that we feasibility study that we published last year, and ultimately it's a revenue mix of 60% silver and 40% gold, similar to what we're currently doing right now. It's a high-grade underground mine. As I say, it's going to double our production. But the key aspect of Terranera is its cost profile when it's in operation. Using the $20 silver price and $15.75 gold price from the feasibility study, cash costs are $0.59 cents per ounce of silver, and all-in sustaining costs over the life of the project is $3.24. Ultimately, the NPV on the project was $175 million at those prices, IRR 21% with a payback over three and a half years. Uh, and we've continued to optimize that project over the last year since we've, we've done that. Uh, ultimately, I think we're going to end up having the same project, despite what we've seen from an inflation standpoint. So the optimization will kind of eat into what we've had, what we see from an inflation standpoint. We have acquired all our mobile equipment. About 95% of that's on site. We have a ball mill already on site. So we are pushing ahead, locking in a lot of our costs on the Terranera project. It's what we've done at our other operations. It's a 1,700 ton per day underground vein mine. Uh, Bolinitos has run as high as 1,600 tons per day. El Cubo, when we operated that asset, got as high as 1,800 tons per day. So this is exactly what we've done, what we've historically done. The difference from going to see in Bolinitos is we have a 12-year mine life. At Bolinitos, we've never had more than a two, three-year mine life, despite being there 15 years. Guana V, really, again, two to three-year mine lives from a reserve standpoint, despite being there 17 years. With Terranera, we have a 12-year mine life defined in our feasibility study. The base case, as I've touched on, but using the $24 price, $1,800, which when we came out with a feasibility study, you can see the, the juice that happens, the NAV and the IRR and the payback period. And ultimately, then you're talking about negative cash costs over the project's life and an all-in sustaining costs in the dollar range. <clears throat> with average annual tax cash flow close to 50 or over $50 million, and over the life of the projects, $467 million. Just our production profile, uh, like anything with an optimized mine, it's gonna have higher grades at the front end of the mine to improve IRR and NAV. But ultimately from this slide, what we wanna point out is the exploration opportunity with Terranera. Still open at depth and along strike, there's the main ore body. Uh, there is an envelope around that with inferred, which would add another couple of years of production. And then the La Luz vein, which is grading close to 12 grams gold. It's adjacent. It's also open to depth and a long strike. With the potential with just on Terranera and La Luz, there is regional uh, potential. Last year in 2021, we put out results from uh, a number of veins that we, we started drilling just to prove out what's the potential of the region. San Simon, Fresnillo, Lindero, Pendencia, and Los Cuates, all veins that we drilled last year, all with good results, with good, good widths. We control over 25 concessions, uh, which amounts to about 20,000 hectares in, in the region. We've, we've mapped over 50 uh, known veins. They're all th with range of thickness one to three meters, grading 400 to 1,000 uh, grams per ton. Ultimately, this year, in 2022, we had a $2 million budget to continue to advance Terranera's exploration program with some of that expected in the back half of the year. Build time on Terranera is about two years. Uh, again, we have been pushing this year with a budget of $41 million through October. 
We have a very experienced project team. Uh, a couple of years ago, we uh, added Darren Gray as our COO. He's come from building the Barraquita mine in Colombia with Continental Gold before its sale. And previous to that, he was in Guatemala uh, building the Escobar mine. So ultimately, Endeavor we historically had gone into Guanas and Bolognese, old historic assets, and we kind of expanded those. This will be our first build, but we do have the expertise, and we now have a development group approaching 60 people in our in our uh, uh, engineering office. Again, the attractiveness of Terranera is ultimately its operating costs. Uh, cash costs are in the lowest quartile, and all in sustaining costs using those base metal or base case prices is in the lowest decile amongst silver peers. And with that, that's Terranera, and ultimately we believe Terranera will take us to 15 million silver equivalent ounces, and then what comes after Terranera and development teams that we're building. This year we acquired the Pitaria project from SSR Mining. Its makeup is 60% silver, 40% lead and zinc. Ultimately, this is one of the largest undeveloped silver deposits in the world. Uh, SSR made the discovery in 2002, divined uh, 525 million ounces of silver plus lead and zinc in an open pit concept that came out as a feasibility study in 2012. For us, obviously, you can see on this slide the amount of uh, increase to resources compared to what we have. We have just over 200 million ounces of reserves and resources in our books. This will effectively uh, double that and triple that um, if we can bring this in as a current resource. So right now we are defining this historical resource and trying to bring it up as current. We expect that to be published at the end of the year. Uh, we do have a lot of confidence. Obviously SSR is a very reputable company and all their information that they have is easily to be able to verify. Um, so we don't expect any concerns on that standpoint. It's about how do we move Pitaria forward and Ultimately, this year we have a $1.8 million budget. Some of that's going to be to uh, extend a ramp that's about one kilometer pushed into the, de not ultimately to the deposit, it's another 500 meters to get to the deposit. And then ultimately next year in 2023, we'll look to drill. The history of Pitaria is interesting. Ultimately, with the discovery in 2002, uh, SSR, when they were Silver Standard, came out with a pre feasibility study in 09. It was an underground report. Our underground mine, uh, ultimately done at $11 silver. Of course, silver went from $11 up to $48 over the next three or four years. They reconceptualized the Pitaria project uh, and came out with the open pit concept. And that's where they defined the 525 million ounces of silver. Ultimately languished SSR or silver standard turned into SSR, picking up gold assets, ultimately merged with Alistair um, and Alistair, uh, now as management teams, SSR produces close to 700,000 ounces of gold in seven different jurisdictions. They rationalized their portfolio. For them, Pitaria didn't meet their mandate and came the opportunity for Endeavor to acquire uh, Pitaria. Uh, so we think it's very, uh, very beneficial. Obviously, we see a massive opportunity. We think it pairs very well with our de development pipeline. And then beyond just Pitaria is a project called Peral, and we've acquired Peral actually from Silver Standard as well under the old management team in 2016. We started drilling it and we defined 40 million ounces of silver. COVID hit, we weren't able to drill there in 2019 and 2020. 2021, 2022, we, we recommenced drilling program. Our goal is to get to 60 million ounces of silver, uh, and then we'll put an economic study on it. This year, we've been re releasing results. The results over the last two years have been higher grade, better widths than what we've previously had. So it's been going extremely well. This is an old historic district. Uh, there is lots of mining in this area. So we do expect that we would be able to bring Peral on relatively well. And this pairs extremely well with, with Pitaria and, and the long-term growth of Endeavor. Ultimately, if the marketplace after we're done building Terranera uh, is doing well, it's perhaps we looked at Pitaria uh, if it's not doing as well, it's something we could go to Peral. Peral, we have a concept that would be a smaller operation somewhere in regards to 2,000 tons per day. But again, something that's pure silver, 90% silver, 10% lead and zinc, and something that works really well to get to our goal. But what we're trying to do is become a, a effectively a senior silver producer. Um, so we're excited about our pipeline. We've got a lot of work to do, and Pitaria and Peral and Terranera are ultimately all silver assets that are going to work very well hopefully into the future. 
again, just our leading growth strategy in our, in our space. We are in Chile as well, and we did pick up an asset in Nevada last year. The asset we picked up in Nevada is a gold asset. The previous uh, owners had defined 300,000 ounces of gold, 13 million ounces of silver. We're continuing to push that forward. Uh, and obviously in Chile, we're continuing our program this year. Current capital structure, we have 100 million shares outstanding. Our balance sheet's in great shape. Uh, at the end of the Q2, we had over $150 million in working capital. Our cash position was $116 million. Uh, ultimately, we had no debt on our books, no long-term debt. We had the odd mining, um, some mine equipment leases that would be deemed long-term, but that would be under $5 million. We have some of the best leverage to silver in the space. You can see our beta compared to our, our, some of our peers here on the slide, almost three to one, and that's effectively our, our exposure to silver. As I say, we're 60% silver, 40% gold, so no base metals currently in our portfolio mix. Uh, and ultimately, Bolognitos and Guanasvi have operated very well for a long time, but they are mature assets. But uh, it's it's been a really good story. We have analyst coverage across Canada and the United States, uh, and ultimately continue to work to become what our goal is to be a senior super producer. Again, Terranera is gonna double our production and cut our cost profile in half. Our balance sheet's in great shape. We have an experienced management team that's gonna be able to deliver on this growth over the next five to 10 years. And ultimately at this point, I'd like to open up for questions if we can. Are there any questions? Awesome, great. <laughs> Cause, go ahead. Hi, Dan. <clears throat> Um, as you mentioned, Terra Nera is a potential game changer for Endeavor Silver. Um, in terms of construction, you're not there yet, but uh, how have you considered how you would manage the risk of inflation? And uh, the second question is, have you considered the different alternatives in terms of financing that project? Yeah, um, so managing inflation First off, there's obviously a natural hedge there for inflation with silver and gold. That's part of it. The other thing is how we've been so aggressive with our with acquiring mobile equipment. The ball mill is already on site. Um, so we have locked in a lot of um, items where we saw risk of inflation hitting. Obviously, when we go build the, the plant, there's going to be some cost increases from uh, steel. Uh, we expect that. So over the last year, we've been optimizing that project to kind of deal with the inflation aspect of it. There's only so much we can do when it comes to inflation. I mean, obviously we need those inputs uh, and it's gonna be about managing effectively the timeline to make sure that we stay on budget as best we can. Um, for your second half of your question, looking at alternatives, our balance sheet's in great shape. We have been working with various groups on project loan financing and it's something we've been working on for the last six months. We've gone a long ways from that standpoint. We've really beefed up our ESG documentation and our equator principles documentation to work with commercial banks. Uh, we want to try to execute that in, the, in Q4. And once we execute that, uh, that's when we'll have a formal construction decision because all our permits are in place. There's mod little modifications that need to be done on those permits, but we think that's normal course stuff. Ultimately, there's a lot that we can do under the permits that we have. So again, when that, that project financing hopefully comes and, and gets finalized in Q4, uh, we can announce that. As far as that doesn't work out, we've looked up and down the spectrum for different loans. We do wanna take on some debt. Our balance sheet's in great shape. We think it's important to take on some debt, but not too much. I mean, it is mining, it is silver. Silver is very volatile metal. We don't wanna get in a position where, where we get hamstrung because of covenant, so to speak. Hello. Of course, I agree as well. Um, maybe a question on Pitaria. You know, I've covered Pitaria as an asset for a long time. As you talked about, first iteration was a smaller operation underground. And then, um, you know, the concept change into a bigger operation, higher CapEx. Now that uh, Pitaria is in the hands of Endeavor Silver, how are you looking at it? Yeah, I mean, it's early days yet for how we're looking at it. Ultimately, we are underground vein miners. That's what we know. Um, and then obviously in the world that we're living right now with silver at $19, we think the underground aspect's probably the way we're gonna look at it, but we're gonna stay open-minded, get the resource figured out, get our drilling done, and then see where we are from the marketplace and let the engineers kind of solve that issue for us. Um, there is some underground high-grade feeder zones that I don't wanna say ignored, but because of how they went to the open pit concept, 
probably did, got looked over. So we're going to probably focus on that a little bit harder from an exploration standpoint, which probably gears us more towards the underground, but never say never. Thanks, Cosmos. And uh, with that, we're out of time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.